Hello friends, today I am going to discuss something about non-verbal communication. What is meant by non-verbal communication? Non-verbal communication is the method of communication wherein we don't speak anything. Wherein we convey our all the ideas by the help of our hand movements, our body movements and different kind of gestures without making actual use of spoken words. That is called non-verbal communication. Non-verbal communication is further divided into many different parts which we are going to discuss today. These important parts are body language and para-language. What is body language and para-language? In non-verbal communication friends, we talk with our, with our whole body. We don't use words but we talk with our whole body. In non-verbal communication, people concentrate on our body movements also. They concentrate on how we sit, how we stand, how we move and how we show different kinds of hand movements and other body movements. So these kind of hand movements and other body movements, they clearly indicate that what ideas are running currently in your mind. What kind of ideas are currently running in your mind? What you are currently thinking? What you are thinking about the person you are talking to or what you are thinking about the person who is giving a speech in front of you? By noticing all these kinds of body movements and your gestures, people are easily able to find out that what you are exactly thinking in your mind. So in this way, non-verbal communication has actually communicated large number of details about you, about the pattern you are thinking in, about the manner of your usual thinking, ladies and gentlemen. So this is very important part of non-verbal communication, that non-verbal communication without expressing your ideas in written form without expressing your idea in a spoken form you can easily convey that what lies inside your mind ladies and gentlemen so this is the importance of non-verbal communication non-verbal communication is further divided into many different parts first of all i will deal with as i said we have body language similarly we have para language what is para language language is the mode of communication with different people. We talk to different people in different languages. So we talk in Hindi, we talk in English and we use many other languages. The people belonging to different regions of the world, they use their own specific language to communicate their ideas to whom they are talking to. But what is para language? Para language, ladies and gentlemen, para language is how we verbalize something. We express different ideas by different methods. We express different ideas in different language and sometimes we can express the same ideas in different forms by using different modes of communication by uh, making different gestures different face expression we can convey same idea in different manners this is called para language para language is how we actually verbalize something how we actually say something same thing if said in different mode can put different impacts on the mind of the receiver ladies and gentlemen so, as different, same thing, spoken in different way, it creates different ideas in the mind of the receiver. And as the receiver gets those ideas, accordingly he works. Although you have conveyed the same information to the person, but since you have conveyed the information in different way, the person who is receiving the information, he will interpret that, of, that information in different way and he will further proceed with that information in a different way in an organization, ladies and gentlemen. So para language is also a very important part of the non-verbal communication as I said. Non-verbal communication has further some important parts which I am going to tell you now. First of all is proxemics. What is proxemics? Proxemics ladies and gentlemen deals with the distance between two people while they are talking to each other. People who are communicating to each other they should take into consideration the distance between each other and this distance is very much visible in business organization where people belonging to different level of the organization they time again they time and again communicate with people belonging to different departments and people belonging to different levels in the organization ladies and gentlemen suppose you belong to a lower strata of the organization and your boss belongs to the higher strata of the organization sometimes you communicate with your boss in a proper way. If he is friendly with you, you will communicate any information to him. But if the boss is not friendly with you, if the relationship between you and your manager are only professional, they are not at all personal. 
that you won't be able to convey major details. You won't be convey. You won't be able to convey the personal details to your managers, to your seniors. So this is called the distancing between the two people because of the level they belong to in the organization. So these are certain non-verbal clues which indicate that how communication actually proceeds in the organization between the people belonging to different strata of the organization, ladies and gentlemen. Similarly, as we have this distance language, similarly we have time language, the time dimension decided by the people belonging to different strata of the organization. We all know that there are today shift systems in the organization. People in different IT and non-IT organization, they work in different shifts. Some are working in morning shifts, some are working at night shifts, some are working in afternoon shifts. So what happens when people belonging to same department, when people who are involved in same kind of work, if they are working in different shifts, then what happens? Actually, they are not able to communicate their work-related information to each other. Suppose a person is working in morning shift, he is not able to communicate he is not able to communicate at the same time with the person who is working in afternoon shift or night shift. So this is called time gap or time distancing between the people. So these are certain distances which actually determine that how people actually communicate in the organization. So these are basically the non-verbal clues. These are basically the non-verbal clues that indicate that what kind of communication is actually taking place inside the organization and how these non-verbal clues are actually responsible for upliftment or the downfall of the organization if used or not used properly in the mode of communication, ladies and gentlemen. Again, moving forward, I have some other ideas related to non-verbal communication. There is one mode of communication called haptics. Haptics is the touch mode of communication. Sometimes while communicating with someone, we touch the person. We shake hands, we pat on his back, you know, we touch his shoulders. Sometimes we talk our hands over his shoulders. And as long as we are talking to that person, our hands remain over the shoulder of that person. What does it conveys? It conveys that we have personal intimacy with that person. It conveys that we personally know that person. It conveys that we actually appreciate that person. So this appreciation kind of gesture, this appreciating gesture conveys a very good information to the person you are talking to. This appreciating gesture, it tells the other person that you actually care for him. And while you are talking to him, that caring nature is clearly visible. So by this mode of non-verbal communication, we clearly indicate the other person that yes, we care for you. We put our hand on his back. We communicate with him and we say that, okay, I'm actually listening to what you are saying. And I'm not only listening, I'm sincerely following what you are saying. So if we are conveying such kind of information to the other person we are talking to, we can create a very good relationship between us and him. We can create a very good relationship between everyone whom we talk to. So these are very good effects of non-verbal communication, ladies and gentlemen, which must be followed by everyone working in the organization to ensure the success of the organization. Because if the people belonging to the organization work together, they care for each other's feeling, they respect each other's timeline, and they respect each other's work profile, then only an organization can think about achieving a long-term success, ladies and gentlemen. So these non-verbal clues, these non-verbal gestures and these non-verbal actions, they play a very important role in any kind of communication inside the organization. And lastly, I will deal with one more kind of non-verbal communication, ladies and gentlemen, which is known as silence. You might be thinking that silence is not at all a communication, right? Yes, silence is not at all a communication, but it is definitely a kind of non-verbal communication. I tell you how. When we talk to someone, we don't talk continuously. Suppose you are talking to someone, you, are, you don't talk continuously. First you talk, then he talks. You ask something to someone and in reply, he gives you the answer. While you are talking, he listens to you carefully. And while you are talking, sorry, and while he is talking, you listen to him carefully. So what is that period of listening? That period of listening is silence. 
while he is saying something, you are silent, and while you are saying something, he is silently listening to you. Why you are silently listening to that person? So that you can clearly understand what he is saying and appropriately prepare your response in return of what he is saying. Similarly, he is also doing the same thing. When you are talking, he is silent so that he can actually understand what you are exactly saying and he can frame his response accordingly. So silence is a very beautiful kind of non-verbal communication, ladies and gentlemen. We sometimes think that silence is bad. Sometimes we think that silence is good. People have different perceptions regarding silence. But if you consider silence as a mode of non-verbal communication, it is really very important in any kind of organization, be it inside the organization, be it outside the organization or the personal grounds, ladies and gentlemen. So we must concentrate on the importance of silence. Silence is of different kinds. Silence, when you are listening to someone, is different from silence of any other kind. When you listen to someone, you remain silent because you want his ideas to be conveyed to your mind properly. That's why you remain silent. And sometimes if you have been ordered to be silent, sometimes you have been forcefully ordered to be silent, that yes, the atmosphere where you are sitting in, the atmosphere where you are standing, it requires you to remain silent for a while. That it is an ordered silence, ladies and gentlemen. You don't remain silent in that mode because of your own wish. You remain silent because you have been ordered to do so. When someone is giving an important speech, we remain silent because we have been ordered to do so. We have been ordered that we should remain silent because if we are not silent, we won't be able to understand the concept of that person properly. And if we are not able to understand the concept of that person properly, we are not going to implement it properly in our daily life. So this is also a very important mode of non-verbal communication, ladies and gentlemen. So today, I told you something about non-verbal communication. It is very important to inculcate all the intricacies of non-verbal communication in your day-to-day -day life, ladies and gentlemen. Not only in your organizational life, but also in your personal life as well. Unless we realize the importance of non-verbal communication in our life, we cannot succeed in any sphere of the life, in any sphere of the organizational uh, work. So it is very important to concentrate on all the non-verbal cues that we often see with the people whom we are talking to on a regular basis. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope this session is as informational as my previous sessions. I hope that you will concentrate on the non-verbal aspects of language. I hope that you will clearly concentrate on non-verbal aspects of language. You will concentrate and you will remember what I told you today. And you will not only remember what I told you today, but you will also follow these things in your day-to-day -day organizational tasks. Thank you for being here, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much.